Welcome to worship. Coming from St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania, for the week of Sunday, May 16th, 2021, the seventh and last Sunday of the Easter season. In today's gospel, we overhear Jesus praying to God. He prays for his followers on the night before his death, includes his desire that his followers will be one with Jesus and with God. This oneness involves a mutual, abiding, intense, and in-depth relationship with God and others. This oneness penetrates our everyday lives with joy, love, and peace. Our announcements for this week include a reminder that our special offering for the month of May is for the Fleetwood SAFE graduation. Also, beginning in June, we will be collecting personal care items to put together care kits that will be distributed through Lutheran World Relief. You can bring your items in and put them in the box marked LWR, which will be in the entryway. The items that you will need to collect um, will be listed in this week's posted bulletin and will also be included in the June newsletter. On Wednesday, May 19th, from 6 to 8.30, we invite youth and their families to come out for a time of fellowship with a candidate for the position of Youth Family and Community Coordinator here at St. Paul's. If you're planning to come to eat pizza, please contact Megan Coots so that she knows how many people to count on. Please join me now for the Thanksgiving for Baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, for your spirit come into us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, in the, like rains that quench the thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water that are shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. For to you be given all praise through the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please share a sign of Christ's love and peace with one another.
let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from John 1, the fifth chapter. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Jesus said, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you have given me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me from the world, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that my joy may be made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, but the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And I have sanctified myself for their sakes, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord.
Welcome, kids. I'm going to talk to you today about the number one. Now, this is not a repeat of learning your numbers from Sesame Street or from your early years in school or preschool. But it's to talk about how important number one is. I mean, you need two of these number ones to make number two. And you need a hundred of these number ones to make 100. This number is important for adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing. It's important because God has given us one body and one mind. And all the parts, our hands and legs and our hearts and livers and organs are all part of one complete body created by God. In the gospel this morning, Jesus prays for us. And I mean, he prays for you by your name and prays for me using my name, Tom, that we may be one with him. Now think of it this way. As one person, you and I are each part of families with moms and dads. Maybe we have sisters and brothers. So each of us in our family are one person, but together we are one family. And that's something of what Jesus means when he says that he prays for us to be one with him. We are part of one family of all the believers of every time and even those alive today and those who are not alive. One big family whom God loves and we love him back. And so when he prays that we will be one with him, he's praying both that you and me as one person will have a loving and caring and compassionate relationship with Jesus who cares just as much for you, which is very much, as he does for me. But we're also part of the one body of believers. When we worship on Sunday morning, we're one group of people who worship Jesus. Many individuals. But each of us are one person, all gathered together because Christ created us one by one. But he created us to love each other and to love him. So you see, one is not just so important in math and in counting. It's important in our relationship with Jesus. Thanks, kids. Today, we overhear some of Jesus' most special words, some of his most important requests of God that involve us. In the gospel today, Jesus prays a powerful prayer that makes incredulous things happen. These words are planted so deeply into the hearts of those God has given to Jesus that they are able to believe this truth about Jesus as God's son, which opposes our cultural ways, opposes our science, opposes our religious practices, opposes our political agendas. Can you imagine overhearing a conversation that has such a powerful effect on you, one that can change the course of your life? I remember when I was ninth grade, I had mono 
for the first of three times. My parents were in the kitchen one evening while I was in bed sleeping, which is what you do with mono, and I overheard them. They thought I was sound asleep, but I was really lying there awake. They were concerned that maybe I was overscheduled in too many activities, and that wore me down, and that was the cause of my mono. But what struck me the hardest was when one of my parents said, he cannot be in both scouting and in music. I think he should drop music. No way! At one and the same time, my stomach took a nosedive and my anger and frustration elevated to a high pitch. And even though I wasn't feeling very well, I got up out of bed and I stomped down to the kitchen and I made myself clear, I will not give up music. And so, upon overhearing that conversation and reacting as I did, the plan was set. At that point, I knew that music was to become a prime focus of my extracurricular activities. Focus on music, band, jazz band, concert band, and the possibility of going on after high school to major in music. Overhearing a conversation probably meant not to be overheard, led me to make significant change in my young adult teenage plans. But what is it that we overhear in Jesus' prayer today that is so incredulous? Does it turn us off? Does it overwhelm or discourage us at the scope of Jesus' words? Are there things that Jesus prays for that just might adjust or set the course of our lives spinning? Are the things he prays for surely beyond our reach? Are we unable to let go of the things that he thinks we should let go of and to grab hold of the good things that he prays for out of love and compassion for us? Well, Jesus' prayer is many things. It is his prayer of leave-taking, for he will be ascending into heaven to be with God. It is his summary words of all that he has taught his disciples, praying that God will make them one in believing and standing firm against the world's opposition calling on God to strengthen Jesus' followers through the spiritual struggles that will be ahead. Can we hear in these words that the things Jesus prayed about in the presence of his original disciples are things he's praying about for you and me today? One of Jesus' prayer concerns is for us to be one with God. Jesus prayed these words. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you have given me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Over time, Jesus used so many images to get to the idea of being one with God. The shepherd and the sheep, one flock, one shepherd. Christ the vine, one vine. Christ relating to us as friends, one partnership. Each of these is a description of an ever-deepening bond 
that Jesus has with us and we with him. Each is God's word given to Jesus to be given to us. Consider it this way. When two people are married, we say the two become one. This does not mean that somehow their, their bodies merge together and they become some kind of a conglomerate blob of, of each other. But what it means is two unique and loving individuals come together to share their love with one another, each still remaining unique and gifted and offering those gifts to the relationship. But the relationship is one. They strive to live in harmony to their, bow, their vows. They strive to live faithfully in what promises to be an eternal commitment. Using their unique individual God-given gifts and guided by the Spirit, they invest themselves in their lives together. Being one with God in Christ comes with benefits. Benefits that we are protected in God's name. Jesus prays this prayer on the night before his arrest. Certainly his own fate was in his mind and troubling. And yet he is so focused on you and me and on all his followers, and on securing our sense of safety, faithfulness, and commitment, even as we live on in the world. He prays these words to protect us through trials such as he is about to undergo. He prays them certainly to guide us through our everyday trials. To protect, to protect us not by preventing us from encountering danger, but by assuring and reassuring us that in the midst of danger, God does never loosens or severs the bond, the one bond that we have with him through Christ. Oneness in Christ is like a shield that envelops us all the time. As Jesus prayed, I guarded them so that not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost. He also prayed, I gave them the words that you have given me, but the world hated them because they do not belong to the world. This may be the most difficult thing we overhear in this prayer this morning, that we do not belong to the world. That most likely strikes our ears like a full-blown punch. Yet it clearly draws the line between being one with Christ, being his followers, even though the world opposes him and us. It clearly draws the line between being followers of Christ, who though he came into the world in flesh himself, did not come to condone the ways of the world, but to reveal the ways of God. The hard fact is that the world doesn't like God's methods, yet it is in Christ's power to oppose worldly things that he has the true power to protect those in God's name that God has given him, us. This protection is given through the words that God had given Jesus to give to us that offer an irresistible option of choosing life in Christ, who is one with God. In this world today, I cannot imagine any greater assurance or protection than this. Can you? So how much is this overheard assurance worth to you? How much does it matter as you confront the world, as it comes into your home by internet, 
radio, TV, as it plops itself on your doorstep each morning, as it confronts you out on the street and in the workplace, at school and in the public square? How much does this assurance that Christ protects and guards us so that not one of us is lost, not even you, how much does this mean to you and to us? It is often said the world can be a scary place. In our time, we have seen too much of these scary places and events at too close to home. And the traumatic impact that these things have on so many, many lives. COVID-19 not being the least of these traumas. But Jesus is quite clear. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost. Are you able to accept this truth today? as the God-given reality that although you may not always see it, it's always happening. How do you want, and I take these overheard words of Jesus' prayer and get them into our consciousness, repeating them over and over so that they become a part of our everyday awareness? Imagine what it might be like to really believe that we are protected and guarded by Christ all the time. How might these, this change the way we understand what we experience? Change our understanding and behavior as married couples, or as best friends, or as workmates, or as sister and brother servant friends in Christ? In what ways might this enable us to see possibilities for making choices in the world that we could not even imagine without Jesus? for standing more boldly for the ways of his kingdom, the way of love. Do you wish right now that you had not overheard Jesus' prayer? I can tell you on that day back in ninth grade, I did not like at all what I heard coming out of my parents' mouth. But I did hear it. And it amplified and clarified a major focus in my life a major gift that God had given me, that he was nudging me to explore more deeply. What if we consider that what we have overheard Jesus praying today is a lifetime opportunity? What if it stirs up in you or me a realization that the world can be dangerous and scary? What if that stirring causes us to want God even more, to want to love him more, to trust him more? What if it causes us to listen more clearly to the words of God that Jesus has given us today? To better understand what it means to be one with God even as we live in the world, to fall into the will of God like lovers falling in love for the first time. Only this could be also a falling away from old crutches, from vulnerable means of protecting ourselves, from failing ways of finding our true life and falling into what is really, really true for you and for me. Jesus also prayed, just as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may be sanctified in truth. Now this sanctification is not about some holy being set apart, separated from the world in some remote community. It's about going into the world as Jesus sends us. In taking his truth into the world, we are sanctified. Falling into this truth is to be sanctified in the truth, which is God's word. This is about living out our oneness in Christ as the spirit ignites and sprouts the unique aspects of each of our persons, of Joyce and Brian, Emily, Roger, Nancy, 
Aaron, Cecily. Some, even many of us, will go on vacations this summer. Thanks be to God's protecting and delivering hand that this is even possible. Hopefully, we will return from our cruises, retreats, timeshares, theme parks, water parks, whatever it may be, feeling well-rested and refreshed. What would it be like if we could keep such a feeling all year? such a positive attitude, such a sense of healthiness. Well, perhaps with all this talk about being one with Christ, being one as a community of faith and being protected under the strength and power of God, we'll also be this kind of refreshment and restfulness and safety. Perhaps it is these words of Jesus that we overhear that we should come back to again and again over the course of the year to remind us of how well protected we are and how God fully engages with us, with our needs, with our wounds, and energizes us in the truth of God's word. I pray that this oneness, this protection in the world, this presence that Jesus is praying passionately for each one of us, becomes a real experience as he now sends us into the world for us. I pray that this will be enough for us to know and to love and to give away in Jesus' name, amen. confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, fars reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Generous Savior, your, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in the gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise, raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and, a, and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray together as our Father taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. And may the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you today and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.